Welcome to Harvesting Clouds, where we take a practical approach to learning and leveraging clouds. In this video, we are looking at what Azure Private Endpoint Service is and how it works. To understand Azure Private Endpoints, we need to understand the problem that Microsoft is trying to solve using Azure Private Endpoints. To do that, let's look at a very simple scenario. On the left-hand side, I have your on-premises environment. On the right-hand side, we have Azure environment. Now within Azure environment, we have a virtual network shown on the screen by this gray box. Now let's say this virtual network has IP address space of 10.0.0.0/16. Now within this virtual network, we have a virtual machine. And just like any other virtual machine, this VM has a network interface card. Now let's say this interface card has been assigned 10.0.0.5 IP address from one of the subnet inside this virtual network. Now today, if you want to connect to this particular virtual machine, you can do so from your office by going over express route or site to site VPN. What is not involved in that particular connection is internet. You do not need unencrypted connection. You do not need to go over the public internet. Your connection is always secure. You go over private express route or site to site VPN. Now let's contrast this scenario with another scenario. In Azure, you also have Azure storage. So this Azure storage is a public service. It's a public resource provider as a platform as a service. Now let's say that the name of this storage account is ST101. So this storage account will be available at st101.servicename.core.windows.net. For example, if you are trying to connect to a blob service on this storage account, the DNS name for that will be st101.blob.core.windows.net. Now from on-premises, if you have to connect to this particular storage account, you need to go through the internet since it is a public service. Now let's say you have a sensitive data and you want to access that data from this VM. Even then you have to go through the internet. Although Microsoft says that the connection never leaves Microsoft backbone, but still you are not on a private connection. You are not on a secure private connection. So to mitigate this particular problem, to make all these public resources, all these public Azure services available on the express route from accessible from a private network, Microsoft made this change. Microsoft provided this service called Azure Private Endpoints. Now what this service is doing is, it's extending your storage account into the virtual network. Whichever virtual network you select, and a subnet inside that virtual network that you select when configuring the Azure private endpoint, it extends the resource that you select into that particular virtual network. For all intensive purposes, a virtual network card will also be created for this service and your storage account, it will be linked to that particular network card. Now your storage account will also get a private IP address let's say 10.0.0.7. Now you can connect to this particular storage account through express route or site to site VPN through this network card. You can connect either using this private new private IP address or the storage account also gets a new DNS name and you can leverage that DNS name to connect to this Earlier, this was only a public service. Now, this becomes a private service through this Azure Private Endpoint. So, the connection that is done, this particular resource that is added into your network, this connectivity is provided by Microsoft Private Endpoint. And the resource itself, that is extended into the network that is called private link resource. Storage is one example. You can have SQL as another private link resource. You can have an Azure web app 
app service as another private link resource. Even if you build a new service, your own custom service, you can extend that as well into virtual network through private endpoints. And that will be called private link service. You can create service. Microsoft has provided specification hall. You can do that. And then your service will be called private link service. There are various resources in one of the upcoming video. We will be looking at how to configure this in a practical manner where we will be connecting to the storage account prior to creating the Azure private endpoint and after creating the private endpoint. The primary difference is prior to private endpoint, only way to connect to your service was through the internet. You were exposed over the public internet. But now the advantage that you are getting is you no longer need to go over the internet. You can connect to all these services over express route or site to site VPN. That is the power of Azure private endpoint. That is the simplicity in all practical purposes, all you are doing is creating a network card in your virtual network and connecting that card to your uh, Azure public resource. That is your Azure storage account or Azure SQL or Azure web app. And then you are able to connect to this particular storage account or SQL database or web app through your express route through site to site VPN. If you have other virtual networks, which are paired with this particular virtual network. From those virtual networks, you will also be able to connect through the network card. Now let's talk about a couple of key points and limitations of this service. The first one of which is that for same private link resource, you can have multiple private endpoints. And the another one is that for one virtual network, you can have multiple private endpoints. Let's look at what this actually means. Let's say this virtual network is called VNet01. And at the same time, you have another virtual network. Let's call this as VNet02. And this storage account, let's name this as ST101. Now this storage account can have not just one as shown here, but two or three private endpoints with the same VNet. It could be with the same subnet or multiple subnets. The same resource at the same time can have different private endpoints with this VNet02. So from the VNet perspective, the VNet can also have multiple private endpoints with one or multiple services. From the private link resource perspective, you can have multiple private endpoints connected to the same service or same resource. But what is the best practice? What is the recommendation? How you should be implementing this? The best practice says that for one private link resource, you should have only one private endpoint. Why do you need separate private endpoints? Unless until your scenario is very, very complex and it requires multiple private endpoints, you should try to avoid those. You should only have one private endpoint per virtual network. Why this benefits you? So, this will avoid any confusion, any conflicts when the traffic will need to navigate. Also, if you are leveraging the out of the box DNS service, whereas this ST101 will have a DNS name, which will correspond to its private IP address, there will not be any DNS conflicts if you are using only one private endpoint. So that is one part. Second part is, let's say you have something called NSGs. If you don't know what NSGs are, or you want me to explore NSGs in detail, we will be covering it in a subsequent video. But for now, think of NSGs, the network security groups, as firewalls that are applied on a subnet or directly on the virtual machine inside your virtual network. So this firewall, the network security group, let's say it has been applied to a subnet. And this storage account, the network interface card linked with the storage account, this is connected with that particular subnet, which has the NSG. Now the limitation is that the subnet can have NSGs and other resources, for example, this virtual machine, it will honor those NSGs. 
but the private endpoint and the private link resources, they will not follow those NSGs. So this is a limitation right now. The second limitation is that if you have user-defined routes, that the traffic should flow in a particular way. It should follow the rule that you define in user-defined routes, then your storage account that will not follow or the private endpoints, they will not follow those UDRs. For each and every resource, you will need to define the UDRs by slash 32 address spacing. If you want me to explore this limitation in detail, let me know in the comments below and I can explain this in much more detail. But basically network security groups and user defined routes, it's a known limitation as of the time of this particular recording that the private endpoints and the private link resources, they will not follow those. Now the last thing, how many number of private endpoints can you create? The number of private endpoints that you can create for one virtual network is 1000. Same goes for the private link service or sorry, private link resource. You can have thousand private endpoints for each private link resource. For more details and up-to-date information, I'll provide the link for the Azure service limits in the description below. And you can validate and verify what are the current limits for private endpoints from the private link resource perspective and also from the virtual network perspective. So that concludes what private endpoint is and how this service benefits you. It provides you with this great ability to leverage these public resources, but make them behave as if they are private resources existing within your virtual network. If you have any doubts or you want me to cover some portion of this particular video in detail, let me know in the comments below and I can take those up in one of the subsequent video. In the upcoming video, we will be looking at private endpoints in action. We'll see how the behavior is for the connectivity before private endpoint is created and how the behavior is after the private endpoint is created. If you like the content in this video, do hit that like button, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the latest content. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.